you know, again, I'm, I'm painting with, with a broad brush. I understand, but you know, there was a bit where TSMC's model of sort of being behind, but we build a fab and we run it forever and that we make, we make pennies at a time, but it's, it's all depreciated. So it's pure profit. And that keeps us going forward. It was a very natural sort of alignment between, I think the broader culture and sort of like their business model. And there's a bit where TSMC, it's, I think, been a cultural challenge for them to go from always being behind to being ahead. Right. And when you're ahead and you're the only one that can make the leading edge chips, the appropriate response is to charge out the wazoo for it, like Intel used to do, right? Like, yeah. and, and and they've or, or been... in another industry, what what it reminds me of is where the leagues realized that a network like ESPN is able to extort the cable distributors, and then eventually the leagues say, "All right, well, you you can't do that without us, so we're going to take that profit margin, and you're going to pay us historic rights fees now." And the baseline for that market just raised like fivefold, tenfold, whatever over the last 10 or 15 years. I don't understand why that hasn't happened with TSMC and NVIDIA. Yeah, it should have happened, you know, probably in the 2016, 2017 era, but TSMC was very slow to raise prices. Now, they have raised prices. It's gotten much more expensive on the leading edge, and they've shifted to more of an Intel model where they make money up front. And part of it is because they have no choice. These fabs are so expensive, number one. And number two, it's not clear how long they can be used because you ha like if you're building a chip where 28 nanometers is good enough, why do you wh why why change right? Like it's mm -hmm. so expensive to go out, and so they have an issue at seven nanometer in particular. They have fabs that are not running at very high capacity at all because like there's been sort of a breakage. It used to be just everyone sort of moved down you know, a few years behind the leading edge, all the, all the slower stuff, but they're like, no, we don't actually need to be faster. Why are we going right. to pay so much to sort of go down and redesign? That's right. And so, and so they, which means they have to change to an Intel model of, of they have to make back all their money up front. And they, you see other aspects of this too. One of the most interesting things in the recent earnings calls was them talking about repurposing, breaking down some of their five nanometer fabs to put it in their three nanometer fabs. That's that's what Intel used to do. Intel used to reuse equipment and move it to the next node. TSMC would run a fab forever and ever, but they can't do that anymore because there's not enough sort of volume for those. The, like it's like that that middle that middle's just sort of dropping out, and so they're having to reuse equipment and move it to the next fab. And it's been very interesting to see them have to sort of shift in this direction. But there's an aspect of then extracting your share of the profit has, it, I think it's just been culturally foreign to them and they've been slow to do it. They, again, they have raised prices. I'm not saying they have, they're not charging, you know, as low as they used to, but they, to the emailers point, they probably haven't charged enough. Hmm. So that's number one. Number two, Jensen Huang, as I noted, has not always been on TSMC. In fact, NVIDIA has always hedged their bets. They've always sort of spread them around. The A100, the previous AI chip, before the current H100, and the H200 is coming out, the B100 is going to be announced sort of in a month or whatever, the A100 was fabbed by Samsung. And why was it fabbed by Samsung? Because Jensen has been pretty adamant about NVIDIA not getting locked in to one particular sort of supplier and always having the sort of threat that we could go somewhere else. And it's pretty interesting because on one hand, that looked really bad a couple of years ago. And the reason it looked bad was number one, Samsung was hitting a wall. So suddenly they had to go to TSMC. And then number two, unlike Apple, they didn't have this years long relationship where they could sort of ease into the next note. They had to buy their way in. And that didn't just mean paying pretty high prices, relatively speaking, but they had to make a huge number of purchase promises. Right, you commit. <clears throat> That's right. They had to lock in that they were going to buy all these all, 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 all these pieces. And so you go back to the fall of 2022, and NVIDIA's stock is in the toilet, 
And they're not just writing off inventory, they're writing off future purchase orders. Like we had to get into four nanometers, which is really a five nanometer plus plus. They had to promise we're going to buy all this stuff. And they're like, crap, uh, crypto fell apart. Uh, gaming sort of not taking up as much as we want. We're, we're, we are going to acknowledge we're not going to sell as much as we promised to buy. So we're just going to put it on our income statement right now. And, you know, obviously that ended up not being the case because a month later, chat GPT comes out and sort of everything sort of explodes, but it, it, it speaks it, it, and you fast forward. Now that looks a lot better because part of the issue is TSMC is well aware in the context of NVIDIA specifically when and if competition comes up, Jensen will 100% go somewhere else if he doesn't like the price he's getting. So that's number two. Could he actually number, go somewhere else? That's number the three. TSMC, okay. okay. So num number three is, and I, I wrote this uh, a, a few weeks ago, um, Intel's looking good. Like they're, they're not, comp no, their core business looks horrible <laughs> because they're, uh, they're, you know, they're, they're getting, dis they've been, de their design and manufacturing fell off. So they're getting obliterated by AMD in the data center. AMD has a better design and they're on a better process because they're being built on TSMC. And so their, their business is getting destroyed. But the, the core thing that Pat Gasslinger has been doing is, is wanting to develop and build this foundry business where they're actually getting volume in their fabs by, having a TSMC model where people come in and they actually build their stuff there. And he promised this sort of five nodes in four years, which is kind of overstating. It's more three nodes in four years because two of those nodes are like just slight evolutions of what's there going from the making it work versus broadly available. But it looks like they're on pace to pull it off. They are get they have at least five major customers, one of which is announced, which is Microsoft for their 18A process, which is that fifth node. That process has lots of interesting technology in it. It has a di new kind of transistor, which is which is called uh, gate all around, as opposed to the sort of 3D FinFET ones. It's now like a, or it's, it's, I don't know, it's like 4D. I don't know, that's not good. It's 3D, but it's just, it's a new transistor. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it has a new way to deliver power. It used to be that logic was on the bottom. Then you had the communications layer, then you had power at the top. And the problem is, as these chips have gotten smaller and smaller, to wire that power down to the bottom of the chip, is producing interference and it was screwing with the communications layer. And so what they're doing is putting power on the bottom, then logic, then communication on top. You have no interference problems, but you have a potential big yield problem because if you screw up on the logic, you have to throw the whole chip away, including all the sort of power bits that you put in. TSMC is working on this as well. By all accounts, Intel is, is a fair bit ahead. That's all coming to mark with 18A. Now that's very high risk. They're introducing two new major technologies at this, at this level. And this is the company that really struggled previously. But to be fair, Intel's issue was not new technologies. It was their penny pinching, their desire to stay on uh, DUV, uh, deep ultraviolet immersion mm -hmm. lithography and say, oh, we can just, we don't have to pay for these expensive machines. We can just pass it through four times. We'll get it right. Turns out they couldn't, right? And so, um, you know, their, their mistake before was not being too aggressive. It was actually being insufficiently aggressive. So, that is it should give some you know maybe being more aggressive is actually sort of more suited to them and so they're in you know they're obviously campaigning for the ship's money and all this sort of stuff but to build out this sort of things long in short tsmc is in you know I'm, they're not like going out of business tomorrow right they're then they are still the leaders and they're very confident that their two nanometer will be better than intel's 18a right we'll see okay. when we get there but they deserve the benefit of the doubt i think by and large what matters though is it's a point of dis debate it's actually a discussion there is competition looming for tsmc and ai has saved intel's rear end not because they have great AI chips, but because there is capacity problems. And TSMC, as a long-running foundry and as a fundamentally conservative foundry, again, Morris Chang had to go in there. He had to, he retired and went back in 2010 because they were pulling back saying, no, this is the time to invest. But he's gone, right? And his, his designated lieutenant is retiring this year, you know, at, at that time. And, you know, it's scary to... When these fabs cost $20 billion, if you build a bunch of them and they don't actually end wrong. up being yeah. used, it goes, foundries are so scary. It's a terrifying business. It can go wrong. And Intel, in particularly, if Intel does come to market, that actually 
decreases the motivation for TSMC to build these foundries because they're that much more worried about having there being too much capacity in the market. And it's like, if Intel sinks the market, we're all screwed. And Intel's like, we're, we're coming in. You decide. Do you want and to actually because, compete? Does, is that because Intel just doesn't have any other alternative in terms of company? Intel's desperate. It's exactly right. They have to make this foundry model work. It's the, it, it is... Like, again, people don't appreciate the risk Elsinger is taking with this. The The rational thing when he took over Intel would be to spin off the foundry business, figure out a way to get rid of it, and just move all his chips to TSMC. They wouldn't be bleeding as bad in the data center if they had done that. Their core business would be better. But he, to his credit, said, no, we're going in. What Intel could not have stayed where they are. They either right. needed to drastically slim down like AMD did 15 years ago when they spun off global foundries or they needed to bulk up and say we're going to fill up these foundries by ver by becoming a fill up these fabs by becoming a foundry and getting other companies to make chips we miss mobile the way we get back to mobile is by making arm chips for other people right well, we're going it, to make is it is it something of an inversion of of the way they missed mobile because Intel back then they had such a robust business making chips for computers that it didn't necessarily make sense to upend everything to try to serve the mobile market whereas TSMC was like really well positioned to serve that's right. that market. Yep, and that's right. Yep, that's exactly right. It's sort of flipped as as Intel has no alternative but to forge ahead with this big risky investment whereas TSMC has this robust business on its own with iPhone and, and, and video. They have a lot more to lose. They have a lot more to yeah, lose. Exactly. And, and, and so if you have this, this kamikaze pilot sort of coming in saying, we're building fabs, leading edge fabs, whether you like it or not. And we think we're going to be competitive with you, but even if we're not, we're still building the fabs and we will, we will fill them. We will price at whatever price is necessary to get chips whatever in those takes. fabs. And, and fortunately for Intel, this is happening at a time when demand is exploding because of AI. And this, the AI moment is going to save Intel that, that like that because of this, this explosion. And so you're sitting there with TSMC saying like, okay, we definitely are positioned where we can take price, but we're dealing with a customer who has a demonstrated track record of hedging his bets and not having to be on the leading edge because he is determined to be to have power in this relationship right. with his foundries and who has demonstrated he has a sufficient architecture and software moat that he cannot be on the leading process like with Samsung yet still dominate the market. And we have actual legitimate competition that is arguably behaving economically irrationally, but that doesn't change the fact that we have to think about that in our sort of capacity build out. That's how you end up with, with NVIDIA taking so much margin and TSMC still taking like 50, 60% margin. It's not like their margins yeah. are bad, right?